All right, everyone. It is June 29th, the last day of the first half of 2018. The first half is now in the books. A uh, decent end to the, the half of the year there, the second quarter. Um, while everybody's signing on, let's talk a little bit about the disclaimer. Always read the disclaimer. Read the fine print. That's part of your investing program. Be smart. Um, nothing in this is uh, offer to buy or sell any securities. Nothing in this is uh, all, all past performance is not an indicator of future performance. Read the fine print. Read the disclaimer. Consult a professional. We are not professionals. We are not registered. This is for entertainment purposes only. All right. So it looks like we've got a people, a couple of people on here pretty quick. So let's go ahead and get started. It's Friday, right? The end of the quarter. A um, lot of big week this week. A lot of news in the week. A lot of things happening with Trump and the trade wars. Um, today we had the big second half of that stress test for the banks. Everybody but Goldman Sachs and uh, uh, was Goldman Sachs didn't hit it and one other bank I, we don't care about them because we're not playing it but bank of america did well on the uh, on the stress test so bank of america they're raising their dividend uh 15 cents which is incredibly awesome um and also too they're buying back uh some billion dollars worth of uh stock so that's all good stuff right only goldman sachs and uh Morgan Stanley was the other one uh, that missed the boat there. They didn't do real well on that second half. Um, so look, this morning, it was a big start for the banks, right? Real big start for the banks. Um, by the end of the day, they had petered out. Bank of America had turned red a little bit and things like that. Don't, don't fret that. It's the second half of a Friday afternoon. It's the last day of the first half, last day of the second quarter. Um, just a lot of action, people restructuring portfolios. Another thing you get is called window dressing. Window dressing is where funds at the end of the quarters, at the end of the half year points, what they do is they'll sell stock and they'll put other stocks in their portfolio. So those performance numbers look good on those reports because that's how they get people to invest in the fund, right? So they'll do a thing called window dressing. So you get a lot of weird action on Friday afternoon also. Um, so don't take that second half of the market today too hard, okay? It was a good day for the markets. Uh, very, very good day for the markets. Uh, you know, we're uh, let's talk about the IRS. The IRS introduced a new thing today, and this is kind of place to investors. You now have your postcard filings. It's pretty cool. If you have a chance, you can go take a look at the uh, the article. Uh, I'll post a link here for you. Let's post that link here for you. Now, if you guys want to go take a look, it's kind of a neat program. Um, what's happened is, let's post that link there for you. I'm going to post it in the comments too, so you can click on it if you want. Don't leave the show to go look at this though, okay? <laughs> but look, it's kind of neat. If you look at the picture, it's just a little postcard. You fill it out, you send it in, your taxes are done. It's incredible. My whole lifetime, people have been talking about this, and it seems like the Trump uh, administration's brought it to us. So thank you, President Trump. Uh, other than that, you know, like we said, it was a great start for the day. Nike was a star today. Nike had a great earnings report yesterday, and everything in their forward reporting was just an incredible, rosy picture for the future. Now, Nike is your one of your leading retailers. They're also a global operation. So this is probably giving you some, some little hints on how things are going internally for businesses with the tax reform, with all these things going on with the trade wars, tariffs, things like that. Are things as really bad as they're portraying them in the media? Well, uh, obviously, according to Nike, they're not. Uh, Nike at one point was up about 10 bucks today on a $70 stock. So I think it closed up about $8. It was a star. If you're looking for a play in this sector, maybe you want to look at UA, uh, which is uh, Under Armour, maybe a Puma or something like that. If you're looking for something that might uh, be in line with these uh, earnings report. Generally in a sector, if you have one big dog have a good earnings report, it usually means pretty much across the board, everybody's having a good quarter. Of course, there's anomalies to that. But if you're looking for other plays and stuff, maybe UA, uh, Under Armour. Of course, they've just they've got Stephen Curry, Stephen Curry, uh, a lot of big sports stars on that roster. Uh, they just signed a thing with The Rock and the WWE. It might be a good investment there. Um, let's take a look at next week. It's Friday. It's Friday, and we got a surprise for you in a couple minutes. So uh, you guys hang on for the surprise. But look. Uh, let's look forward to next week. You know, we, we finally got through this second half of the stress test. 
things are all systems go. Yeah, we had a really good morning, but it was a soft afternoon. But we know there's some things that outside events that played into this. Um, end of the quarter, end of the half year, uh, Friday afternoon, weeklies expiring, things like that. There was some pressure. Maybe people don't want to carry still stocks over the weekend because you never know a tweet going wrong can really tank the market, but things look pretty good right now. And let's talk about a little bit about the chart before we get into your surprise. And this is, we've been talking about for the last four or five days, the S&P chart, right? So if you look on that right side, that head and shoulders is still in a formation. You can see that left shoulder and the head right above it. But today's market and yesterday's market was a real good statement by the markets that the selling and might be done. Now, we're not out of the woods yet until we take out the high on that head, which is still about 30, 40 points away. But this is very promising. And if you take a quick look at that chart, you can see there's a lot of big bars in there and a lot of long wicks, a lot of battles going on right now. So we want to kind of be intelligent about our trading going into next week. And we also want to just be very aware that this market might not be as healthy as it looks. Um, the last thing we'll talk about before we give you the surprise is what's up with weed, right? We're getting a lot of questions. Yesterday, we had a question in the group um, about our weed play. We've got a marijuana play going on right now. Um, it's kind of been trickling down. The whole sector has kind of been trickling down right now. And it's almost like we've seen this before in our years, uh, a sector ex that's going to explode. A lot of times it'll take a deep breath before, if you imagine taking a deep breath before you start sprinting or deep breath before you dive into the water. This looks like it might be that because there's so many good things happening for marijuana right now. And, and somebody had mentioned it in our stock group today uh, about how the Warren uh, bill and stuff like that is coming down the line and how it takes these things time to change. Now, Canada legalized it, absolutely. And that's a very positive thing. But we want to stay with our trades. Uh, if you're not fully positioned, you want to buy. This gives you a little bit cheaper of an entry. It's all great and stuff. Nothing has changed in the sector, forward looking. So we're sticking with the play. And that's all we think it is. We think it's just a real deep breath. And then we're going to see a real explosion in the market. Things are just getting too close with legisla legislation, tax revenue, and things like that. So look, like we said, we have a surprise for you. And let's bring them on. Uh, we're going to notify him right now. We're warning him right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who is that? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Welcome, Samuel. Hey. Now, I'm going to have to put on headphones for this because we don't have a speaker on the uh, on uh, the video computer. So in order for me to I like how you have Samuel, the what's up. What's up with weed right now? What's up with weed? Nice. And here comes Samuel. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Samuel. Welcome to the show. Hey, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned weed because um, we've been got we've been getting a lot of people like pulling on our shirt tails, being like, "What are you guys doing in the in the marijuana market? How, how deep are you in the sector? What do you guys see moving forward?" It's really interesting because, um, in fact, I've got a meeting right after this with uh, with an investment partner of mine that's looking to do a big marijuana distribution over in California. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're very, we're very bullish on marijuana. Why mm -hmm. look what happened over in Canada. Wasn't it just yesterday that, that Oklahoma just had that big announcement. Um, yeah, we had posted it. I believe it was Oklahoma that legalized yesterday. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> the feds, it there's, there's indication that the feds might even come down the road you bet like, you bet uh, that's what you know, that warrant bill is all about so and and I, you know i think we had talked about uh about um that one um pharmaceutical that has mm -hmm. cannabis built into it that they're they just released through the fda i mean there's huge you huge bet. things going you on bet. in the sector and and for investors to just be kind of sitting on the sidelines kind of watching it is not a prudent move and this is why mm -hmm. this is why we're very uh, we watch it like a hawk day Absolutely. and night. We do. And there, we do. And and there's really cool things that are like underlying in that market that that um, you know our team has our eyes on that are mm -hmm. that are really really exciting. Anyway, more on that later. But I wanted to share a quick story if I could because I think it. Um, hey Jesse, because I think it's really pertinent to a lot of people out there that are looking to become investors and looking to increase their wealth. Whether you're you know trading. 
a $500 portfolio or you've got a million dollar portfolio that you're trading. The things that I've learned over the years of having money, losing money, having money, it's just invaluable. And I want to really relay this to you, uh, to your audience, I should say, uh, because it's a valuable lesson that came up yesterday in a, in a conversation inside our group. And, it, and that was someone was really excited about the marijuana plays about, mm -hmm. you know, hey, what, you know, we got, we found these really cool marijuana plays. Good job. You guys, you know, I, I, I put in my investment in inside um, our buy recommendations. And when we say buy recommendations, we mean, you know, don't bet the farm on one particular mm -hmm. stock play. Why? Because, you know, we are, we are masters at what's called trading options and options is one of the high highest leverage points inside the stock market where you can leverage a little and get back a lot. Right. But there's times that we lose. We're, people are human. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to relay this story. It was, it was probably five, five years ago or so I had my money. I had, I had a good chunk of change. I won't say how much. It's just a very nice chunk of change because <laughs> it, it still hurts. I already know how much. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I had a good chunk of change with a fund manager that was managing these funds for me because I was over here building out four or five different companies and, and doing the marketing and, you know, setting up these five companies of mine. Right. And so this fund manager said, hey, we're going to go we're going to go deep into this one stock. He's like, I got a really good feeling. I was, and you know, I've been a gunslinger my whole life. And then, mm -hmm. sure, okay, I, no problem. And I must have put, I don't know, a lot of over a hundred grand into this one one particular stock play. I remember one it clearly. Particular stock play, mm -hmm. and, and I just, you know, he, hey, it's gonna go good. I put the money over there. I said, go to it, fund manager. You know your stuff. See you later. I'm back over here focusing on my five companies. Well within a very short period of time, that money just completely, I mean, just at the bottom fell out on that one stock. I lost 70% of my money. And the, mm. there's such a big valuable lesson in here. I don't care if you're a million dollar investor or just starting out in your journey on, on investing. That is that there's never a need to rush to become wealthy. And here's, and, and Patrick, you, you, mm -hmm. you've been down the investing road a long time. You've, um, and I know the, your entire team has been trading multi-million dollar investors for a long time. Wouldn't you agree that there's no, there's no, there's no need to rush for these things? Why? Yeah. Because what is it? There's like 5,000 stocks that are tradable in the market, roughly. There's yeah. always something coming down the pipe today, tomorrow, next week. It doesn't matter. It yep. doesn't matter. Actually, I'm that's, that's <laughs> words of wisdom, Samuel. Um, you know, there's always another trade around the corner. And, you know, you don't want to uh, it, look. I mean, all it takes is one mistake. Like you said, Samuel, that guy puts you in all so deep in those stocks. I mean, think about it. If even if it didn't go down, it's money that's just going to sit there and do nothing. You might as well keep it in your pocket. Right. Well, here's the other valuable part of this of this lesson that I want everyone to really listen to, because this is where the lesson goes from really cool to this will make you millions of dollars. Pay close mm -hmm. attention. Okay. Okay. So I'm listening. We, we, we as a team had looked at this and there was so much money in this one particular stock hold. And it was like, hold on for dear life because nothing's happening. It's just mm -hmm. sitting there and just like, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> it was just like gasping <laughs> for air. I mean, I could laugh about it now, but shiitake mushrooms, man. That was. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was tough. And so I know that a lot of our viewers out there have been in a situation where they've got so much writing on this one stock that they're just watching it like a hawk and like, come on, baby. Oh, geez. And so mm -hmm. I want you to imagine this. I had over 100 grand invested in this one particular stock, this one stock. And it was like, come on, sevens. You know, what do we got? And it's it just kept dropping and dropping and dropping month after month after month after month. And it was like. What am I doing? You know, we had a conversation with the uh, with the entire trade team, and it was like, well, look, we have a couple options to make. Do we sit, make another pot of coffee, and, <laughs> and, and pray that that goes from where it is to not only where it was, but then even more? Because remember, it just kept dropping. To even get yep. back to break even would be a monumental yep. task. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. monumental. Yeah. And 
And so it was, this is the lesson that I need everyone to really pay close attention to. And please in your, right in the comments down you below, bet. if, if this makes sense to you now, here it is, pay close attention. The decision that I had to make was, do we write off this loss, hundred thousand dollar loss, write it off and put that money back in play. Even if it's this much money, do we put mm -hmm. that back in play and give, give myself as an investor a chance to make that money back? Because here's the truth. The truth is that I had two very, very hard decisions to make. I could suck out what was left and try and leverage the balance in the market and, and crush it or pray to God that something happens with that stock. And you know, it's the definition of insanity, Patrick. And that is that mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, hoping to get a different result. And I, I remember <laughs> sitting, sitting there one day thinking to myself, being like, what am I doing? I've been investing since I'm 18. I'm breaking rule number one. And so I like, okay, I get it. We'll sell off. Even if it's just the dregs of that hundred thousand dollar investment. And what did we do? We took that money, even though it was this much, and we yep. leveraged it into a couple hundred thousand relatively quickly. Fairly um, quickly. And it was, you know, it, it that just this little shift for all the investors out there that are maybe just starting their journey, this will change your life. If you've got a dog, have an adult conversation with yourself. I look at myself in the mirror and be like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And so these are times when you really have to put your big boy and big girl pants on and be like, okay, look. It's, it's going in the crapper. It's going to stay in the crapper or I could leverage that money and, and grow it again. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what mm -hmm. I did. And I, I hope every one of your listeners gets that. Yeah, and Marco, I, did you, you see what Marco said there? That's you guys. Uh, that, <laughs> right on Marco. No, Marco has fold. been, uh, you know, the whole group is just such a wonderful group of traders there. And we call them traders now. Because they know this, they know what they're doing, and they're making money and stuff. But you know, like you see, like a Marco that that's look, Samuel. What you're saying is the essence of everything, and it plays right back into what you said about the marijuana play and the patience and the and the sticking with it. And you know, there's times when you can do that, and you're willing to do that. But look at it. What's the difference right now, Samuel? Well, you had 70, 80 percent of your portfolio in a losing stock or a stock. One that stock. I'm so stupid. Look, look at this marijuana play. If we stay on this marijuana play for 10 years, we're, we're still have all the rest of the portfolio we're playing with and all that. That's the big difference. We still got money put into. We've still got most of the money working. If that thing goes to zero, guess what? We're still trading. Right. We're still making money. We're still trading. Um, it, it's a speculative play, but we've turned it into a low risk, easy investment. You know, so, so my that's, biggest, that's beautiful what you said, Samuel. Thank well, you. Well, you know, you know, in my early years of investing, I would I would make lots of money and then I would lose lots of money. It was mm -hmm. like hot and mm -hmm. cold, faucet on, faucet yeah. off. It was, yeah. it was tiring. And I remember when I would lose, like say I lost a couple grand or 10 grand or something, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, oh man, I lost 10 grand. Mm. <laughs> and so what, what would I do? I would take that 10 grand and be like, let's put it on something else. Mm -hmm. And so I can make that money back plus some. And you and immediately go all in on the next one. <laughs> and, so, and so this is the kiss of death for investors. Okay. In fact, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say that that if you do that practice, you're not an investor, you're a gambler. And there's a huge, yes. huge difference of emotion built in there. Investing isn't an emotional, this is not an emotional activity we do. Investing is kind of just going through logistically, um, looking through our charts, our, our news, our, uh, our um, you know, uh, earnings plays, the news mm -hmm. cycle, all these things that we look at it's not emotional. Don't get emotional about it. Yeah. Look, you will become a millionaire mm. with, I don't care if you're starting with $5,000 in your trading account. It doesn't matter. You yes. just follow the guidelines of successful investors that have done this before. And just your a portfolio will go like this. You know, Patrick, I heard you talking earlier about, about the market breathing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good point for people to remember because as people, as, as you know, accounts and stock, they breathe every single day look at any chart it goes like this that's just what it does and so 
if you are wise enough to get with a team that has the capacity to pick it up here and then sell it here and then watch it do this again and then pick it up here and then sell it here. Mm -hmm. That's the whole game. That's the whole game. You guys, Exactly. it's a simple, straightforward game. And you know, the pros have been doing it for years and they don't get excited about it. They don't, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make $10 million on this one stock. It's like, look, I've yeah. got this battery of experience that we're going to invest in and our accounts going to go like this. Mm -hmm. And that's the exactly. whole thing. Exactly. 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 You know, and it's, it's, isn't that, it doesn't it feel good, Samuel, that what is it, two, two and a half years later? Don't you feel so confident when you speak about these things? I mean, and just listening to you, it's such a different Samuel from when we first uh, started managing your portfolio. Well, and here's why. And here's why because, because the previous Samuel, the previous investor Samuel, went from mm -hmm. really wealthy to desperate to wealthy. To yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> uh, you yeah, laugh, but they still do that to you, right? But listen, <laughs> well, well, you know, we laugh about that, but think about it. I mean, over the years since we've been managing client portfolios and helping people get become wealthy, how often do they have that mindset? They don't. Nine, I'd say ninety-eight plus percent of all investors in the market have that mindset, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's a absolutely it's a deadly mindset. Absolutely. Remember back in the beginning too, uh, especially when we, we first started playing plays for you and you started hitting them and you were all, and like, I'd, I'd call you up and I'd say, Hey Samuel, go ahead and jump in. Remember back then you used to pull your own trigger. I'd call you up and I'd say, Hey Samuel, buy these options at blah, blah, blah. And you'd want to buy 500 options. And I tell you, no, 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 no. Buy 25. Remember those days? I'm a, I'm a gunslinger. <laughs> I do. Oh, of and course, it's okay. Of course, it's okay, well, Samuel. You know, it's okay, but as long as you control your gunslinging, yeah. So look, we we have a service called Stock Pick Profits. I, if I if I'll take a quick second just to talk about it. And Absolutely, we have a, Samuel. You got the floor, we, brother. We have a we have a big, 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 big vision, and that vision is we want to create one thousand millionaires with what we do what with we don't just show people in fact i think patrick i think you have some of your subscribers on the show now absolutely um, and it'd be nice to hear from them if they want to put out a little blurb on on the I mean, yeah. what i've been putting out little things there but but we've got this big vision the big vision is you know how can we create a thousand millionaires by what we do and let me digress let me digress just a second because previously when we first started the company financial reboot the whole goal was <coughs> to create millionaires in the market that mm -hmm. normally would never ever have a chance to make a million dollars plus in the market why because let's be honest this is a good old boy <laughs> network I, you know i used to i used to sell military aircraft helicopter tank parts to nato countries when i was 22 years old i had my own office living in santa barbara california i had an office in ankara turkey mm -hmm. And I would fly to Ankara, Turkey to meet with the general, the general, a schmucky little 22 year old <laughs> surfer kid. And I'm sitting around this huge mahogany table with, with other uh, contractors that are bidding on this, you know, $5 million, $20 million contract with spare parts, you know, oh. screws and, and optics and other crazy things for some platform. Right. And here comes the general. And the general would walk over to me and he was walking around the table, making sure everyone's putting in their bids. You know, he walks over to the table and he bends over, his hands behind his back, bends over. And he's like, number four. I'm like, number four. That's like, that's like the big, that's like 25,000 screws for like $28 a piece. I'm like, yeah. He's like, put your price up to $75. I'm like, what? He's like, <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, <laughs> It was a good old boys network. I mean, I bought the guy a bottle of wine or a bottle of whiskey, I think. And he, and now I had the general under my arm. It was like, I, and so he made us millions of dollars. The point is this. The point is that most people in the, re, in the um, stock market would never, ever, ever have access to the type of trading success that we have. And it's super sad. It's super sad. Um, 
And we started the company to reverse that, to turn the tables on that, to where we can now bring people in that have a five hundred or a thousand dollar trading portfolio, you bet. You bet. or have a hundred thousand, whatever you're on, Robinhood, whatever you're on. We had a gal that used Robinhood, yeah, yeah, yeah. five hundred bucks in her trading account. Yeah. But the point is this: the point is that we wanted to level the playing field because when we first started the company, the goal was okay. Let we want to create all these millionaires. But what did we do? We started trading, uh, managing my friend's money, right? I pulled all my friends and hey, we'll make you a million. Mm -hmm. And you know, they started with 80,000, 200,000. Then we said, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. Okay, now new rule. You gotta have $250,000 to use our services. Okay, we're working on it. It was like, wow, it's a lot of work. And we're like, okay, now you gotta have a million dollars to use our service. And it doesn't matter if you've got $20 million. It's a lot of work to privately manage portfolios. So what did we do? Mm -hmm. We're like, we had Patrick. I remember I, I sat down with you and the entire office, the trade mm -hmm. team, the marketing team, everybody. Yeah, and we're like, yeah, we, we are so far away from our goal of creating one thousand millionaires. Like, there's yeah. we can't do it by managing individual. I remember that meeting with you, Samuel. I do. We would die. We would just die, physically die. And yeah. so that's when we said, okay, you know what? We're going to take stock pick profits and we're going to systemize it. We're going to create a system to where. We literally just send you the same plays that not only we as investors, myself, Patrick, the entire trade team, the entire mm -hmm. office, all of us and our multi-million dollar clients use and play, but we send them directly to your cell phone. And I'll tell you, um, it's been, you know, here, I just came back from, um, from Las Vegas, California and Arizona meeting with our team that's helping us build this vision out to transform 1000 people into millionaires with our service mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. they are they love our vision they love our vision they love the simplicity of the product and service that we deliver they love the fact that you don't have to hunch over a computer all day every day looking at charts till your eyes bleed you know the reason we built this company is how can we create a company how can we create a service that allows people to become wealthy to, to achieve that ominous million dollar mark plus without sacrificing their lifestyle. I mean, I don't know if you could tell. Here I am, yeah. here I am in Hawaii. I'm just packing up for a for a weekend staycation. Yeah, you're going out to Mukaha. Huh? Yeah, I'm going nice. to the West Side. Yeah, I'm taking my nice. surfboard. I'm gonna go surf and enjoy That's and relax. How I live, Samuel. But this is the point, right? I mean we all grind. We all do things in our life to 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 chase whatever it is that we're chasing. Mm -hmm. Just create a life for yourself. That, Absolutely. That, that makes a difference. It, you know, it makes you happy because you know, we all got this much time to do what we want to do and leave a legacy. So this is why we built the company for people. Yeah. So I, I'm ranting. Let's see what your clients are saying here. Well, and you can see like Tala, man. And look, she's been a member. What man, What are you about a month now, Tala? Um, upgraded service, having fun. It's like you said, Samuel, look, uh, and you hear me ask it all the time on the show. Are you having fun? If you're not having fun, you're trading wrong. Um, it's all about Samuel. It's all about, you know, what you're going to do on Friday night. It's about what you, you, we work hard. We work hard Monday through Friday. We work hard, right? I mean, your trade teams up at two o'clock in the morning trading usually till what? 11 o'clock. And then they're doing other work. It, it's long hours. The office is just ungodly hours. You guys work. You're so incredible. So, I mean, are you having fun? Why are you doing this? Are you doing this so you can work 15 hours a day and not have a day off? No, no. You're doing this so on Friday night you can just cut ties, go out to the North Shore and not worry about anything, right? Hey, Patrick, can you, put up, doing it right. can you put up Sauna's, um, Sauna's uh, I question? Had I had it up earlier. I wanted I wanna, you to... I, I, I didn't know if you were ready to answer that, Samuel. So, so, yeah. so <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to answer that. So, Who so, are they? <laughs> Sana, yeah. so Sana, let me let me answer this because this we get this question a lot. Um, when when we first started talking about building this model for people, there were stipulations, uh, and and I'm going to talk to you about those stipulations now because the trading team that we have has built millions and millions and millions of dollars for clients over the last 35 years or so. And the stipulation was because I had talked to the whole trading team to pull them out of retirement to start this process. And 
that's what Patrick runs because it's Patrick's team that he utilizes for all of these things. And the stipulation is no one can talk to Patrick. No one, you know, bothers Patrick. Patrick and I ha are creating this thing together and we just create a killer, killer service to make everyone wealthy. Mm -hmm. And the stipulation is, I don't want, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be, and so this is, what, <laughs> and right, and rightfully so. I mean, I'm, I mean, when you have a team assembled that is really good at their job, let them do their job. And so, my trading team for stock pick profits is not looking for fame. They're not looking for accolades. No. no. Um, the accolades are become a millionaire with our service. No. Let us know, and secretly in the back room. Um, all the guys and gals back there are going to be smiling and high fiving because they've they've gone from making people, making wealthy people even wealthier, to mm -hmm. retirement to having me pull them out of retirement. Say, hey, let's build something that really makes a difference for people that mm -hmm. need it. And now the whole trade team has got this vision. Like, that's freaking cool. That's yeah. that's the way that we can give back to exactly. the world and exactly. and make a difference. And that's you know I always say at the end of my shows when I do my Facebook lives is, you know, what are you going to do to make a difference? Yeah. What are you going to do? Exactly. So this is, this is our play to make a difference. So <laughs> Asana, I hope that answers your question because I know we've you had bet. that a lot. And, uh, and Tala had a nice comment. Um, if you can see that Samuel, thank you, Tala. Oh, thanks Tala. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, that, and that's, you know, just to kind of touch on what Samuel was saying, um, you know, that was the challenge when, when the office decided to revamp the, uh, the, the, whole, the, the whole system, right, uh, Samuel, when we went from VIP to uh, membership, right? And it was, it was all about how could we effectively make a bunch of people millions of dollars, right? With just a click and with just very simply without having to hire 700 analysts like Goldman Sachs and things like that. We never wanted to be that big, remember? Because we always wanted to have be able to, we always wanted to be nimble. We always wanted to be communicative. We always wanted to be very tight in, in a family environment in our trading. And you solved all these problems. It's an amazing service, Samuel. It you know, really is. You know, no, we're proud. I almost, I spend almost no time talking about the service, um, other than posting up this little banner here. And I will say it right now, though. It's Friday afternoon. Let's let's do it up. I mean, it, it's the best service out there. It, it is easily the best service out there. You could you could put it under the call to action button. That would be even easier. So it so it gives that scrolling feature. I think is yeah, it one thing. Yeah, should be scrolling right now. Oh yeah, there it is. Got it. You know, hey. you know, another thing that <laughs> another thing that's important for people to realize is, you know, with our services, what we find over the over the years is that, excuse me, is that people get spoiled. Yeah, people get really. Oh really yeah. Spoiled. Oh yeah, yeah. Let, I mean, because this is an important point to to make. I think currently, currently for the year of two thousand eighteen, you know, we we track all of our stocks. Excuse me, all of our sold plays, and mm -hmm. we make that public publicly accessible for everyone so they can see what we're doing and yeah. how, and, you know, we don't care. We want people to, to learn and benefit. Yeah. Right? And so, um, you know, in April, April 1st, we were up 83% for the year. Then April came and it was one of the yeah, hardest yeah, hits in yeah. the market. Yeah. Market had in, you know, some bunch of years mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. lost a bunch, we lost four or five players right in a row. And mm -hmm. it took our, it took our yearly, average down to 11% profit for the year. Mm -hmm. And then a month and a half later, we had a couple more plays and we're up to 63%. And then yeah. we had a sell, sell off. And now I think as it sits now, we're sitting at 34% return for the year. You bet. Now, you bet. You bet. This is something that I, I really hope people understand. <laughs> Guys, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm going to put you on solo for this. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so I think, yeah, Roland, we do all like spoiled. I mean, the truth. But, you know, we, we notice this as we're building out this um, this big machine to get more people into the service, right? That don't know us. They've never seen my story before or any of this. They haven't heard anything before. They're they're cold prospects, so to speak. And so, you know, they're, they're, they've got a different mentality. And so who wouldn't? be stoked to have a 34% return a year. Are you, you bet. are you kidding me? 34% return. 
return yeah. a year is spectacular. Now that being said, that being said, um, I think our first year we did a hundred and nine percent return. Yeah, for the year, yeah. <laughs> we, we just tore it up that year. We yeah, just we tore it up. We had a good year our first year. The second year we we flattened out off that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And but the point is this: the point is that stay in the game. You stay bet. You bet. in the game. And the only yeah. way to stay in the game is follow your buy recommendations. What do we mean by buy recommendations? That means. If you remember my story for from earlier in the interview, um, I told Patrick that I had a hundred thousand dollars stuffed into one <laughs> stock. That's not how you stay in the game. That's not yeah. how you do it. You stay in the game by putting three. We like to say three to five percent in any particular stock at any given time. Does that make sense? I hope so because um, I know we get a lot of questions on that because people get excited and they. You know, we just had a 100% return on this, or we had a 200% return on this. Ooh, we're on a hot streak. I want to put 10% in on this one. Be careful. Be careful. Follow along. Do what the multimillionaires do in terms of growing their portfolio. You know, I think, Patrick, I think I heard you say over the years um, with the trade team says this all the time to our brand new clients, you know, because the clients comment on the page and, and people on the trade team take turns responding to people. And I think the thing is that they say is um, is it's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It's a marathon. And it's it not. A yeah. Yeah. And Roland says, I like being spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> we like you, Roland. <laughs> we'll keep spoiling you. Bro. So anyway, th those are my little nuggets for today. I, I just want everyone to really. Pay attention to that. The, the, I'll just review the lesson real quick, and then I'll get out of everyone's hair and enjoy the weekend. That is, never put all your eggs in one stock basket. Ever, never, ever. Don't. I don't care if Warren Buffett tells you to do that, though he wouldn't tell you to do that. No, he wouldn't. We all know the the Oracle of Omaha would never say that. So the other thing is too. So never put all your eggs in one basket. You heard my story on how I had all this money stuffed in one stock, and it just. So here's what happened. It just crushed me and crushed me. It was like it was like pound. It was like pounding the corn down to this fine grain meal over time. It was like, man, it was like <laughs> those nails on a chalkboard just kept going. I'm like, stop, stop, please stop. And so we made a decision to leverage that money, take the little bit of money that was left over over that huge, huge amount, and reinvest it and play it smart. And what did we do? We built that up a couple hundred grand shortly thereafter. But this is how smart money works. This is how smart money works. You make the educated decisions by removing the emotion out of it. You bet. And then you, and then you continue to be smart. You bet. Save and your emotions for Friday night. And this is why, you know, I was talking to a new client uh, who was saying, she was telling me why she joined the service. She's like, mm -hmm. I love the fact that I don't have to sit there and look at charts all day and I don't, I don't have to learn a new program to make money, you know, spend three to five years to learn how to do this, to make money because you guys really give us the picks. So yeah, I'm like a proud papa. Oh, I'm you like, should be Samuel. You're I'm doing like a great a thing. Papa. Samuel, before we, before we cut out for the weekend and stuff and send everybody to have a good time, let me show you something. So the S&P 500, and this is just for you. I, want, I just wanted your guys' reaction before we uh, finish. But the S&P 500 is up 1.34% for the year. Okay? Okay. We, Ooh. as a service, is up 34% for the year. Okay. So we're beating the shit out of the market, right? I mean, we're just beating the crap out of the market. It, it, seriously, because you want to see how big this is. If you calculate the difference between if you had just made what the market made or you made what we made, it's a difference of 2,437%. Okay. Uh can you explain that again so people get so that? So if a you shift. take 1.34% and you gain and you turn it into 34%, you're actually getting a gain of 2,400%. Yeah. 
So that's how it might look like an insignificant number. And you're right, Samuel. Look, we rip off so many hundred plus gainers. We rip off 200% gainers. We just came off, what, 500% gainers in a row. People's expectations start getting up here, man. And, you know, hey. But I, I will say this, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings when I say this, okay? But if 34% gain on this market at this point of the year isn't enough for you, go find somebody that can get you more. You well, there, I think people will realize that um, <laughs> that's not the case. No, that but you know, it's, 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 it's look, our members, like they all say, they, they relax, it, you know, it's easy. Like you said, we built, you wanted to build a service that was easy for them to understand that they didn't have to do any studying for seven or eight hours or learn. A Dude, I wanted course. to build a service for you guys know? like me, the guys yeah. like me that are yeah. inherently lazy that want to enjoy our lifestyle and don't want to yeah. punch over a computer all day, every day to learn. Yeah. A new skill that I don't have time for it. Guys, look, you have wives, you've got husbands, you've got mm -hmm. boyfriend or girlfriend or kids, or you've got a career, go figure. You got something else to do. This is why we built the company to like you give you the pick. You know, one of, you know, I was just in Las Vegas at a big copywriting conference meeting the biggest players in the financial space in the world in terms of copywriting Agora financial, Right, Agora Financial is the biggest publisher in, yes, sir. in America, maybe even the world. One point yep. five billion last time I checked, and um, and the guy I told him about my service, and he writes for some of the Agora financial stuff that you and I buy, and mm -hmm. it's just crap. I mean, their service and product is just total crap. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But I digress. But I told him about our service. How you know? Hey, we 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 do stock picks to the the you know the cell phone, blah blah blah. And he's like, he's like, copy, paste, profit. profit. And he's like, I like, he's like, that would be a good headline. I'm like, may, may I use that? He's like, sure, man, absolutely go for it. <laughs> but anyway, if we're getting the attention of the largest financial publishing house in America, maybe even the world, guys, I think we're doing something right. I think so, so too. Stay the course, right? <laughs> yeah, the stay lesson the is course. stay the, the course. course. We have, we have what, maybe one or two real guidelines to follow. And other than that, it's, you know, go enjoy your life while we. You while bet. We you bet. Think back yeah. to that April when we had days when $700, 700 points swings down. The market had opened up down 700 points. You had defenseless against the traders. And you never saw us upset. You never saw us pissing and moaning. You never, we no. were right there just grinding it. And that's because we know we're patient. We know that one trade, one market sell offs not going to ruin us. You know, Samuel, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The and again, free. the reason we built this is because I see Ryan just joined us. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Jules. Oh, Ryan. Hey. And Ju Ryan is uh, is my voice teacher. I have a band. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar, he's, yeah. He's my, he sings like an angel. Unbelievable. Mm. Um, Maybe Opera we can get him on the show. To well, he's a, he's a new client as well. Ryan's a new client. Oh, welcome. Yeah. And I see I got we got Jules on. Jules is Greg's cousin from Dubai. What's up, hey. Jules? Kenny's here too. Kenny's here but, too. But but here's here's one thing that I want people that don't have the service to really understand why why the company is built the way it is. Most people are scared of investing. Mm -hmm. They're and yep. most people that that actually do invest are scared of the stock market. I get that. We 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 all get that. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. And so why did we build this? We built it for people like Ryan, actually, mm -hmm. and for people like Tala, and yeah. for people like just about every single one of our, Manny. Do you remember Manny? Manny. Yeah. Manny's the guy that gave us a video testimony, and I wish we could play it here, but the software doesn't yeah. allow us to do that. No, it but doesn't. he sent I'm us sorry. a beautiful testimony. He's the most laid back, chill dude. Yeah. And and he never participates in any of the shows. He doesn't no. participate in the group. He just, <laughs> he, just, he just makes the trades we give him, and he yeah. laughs about it. And he sent us a really cool testimonial, if you remember. He, was wearing, he was wearing a big uh, <laughs> you know, American flag shirt and the most emotionless, um, uh, uh, monotone dude. was like, um, you guys, I uh, thank you, Financial Reboot. I just made my first trade, not knowing what I was doing, and I made $10,000 on my first trade. Woohoo. Yeah. Thank you so much. I was like, <laughs> man, were you excited or not? I don't know. But the point is this. The point is that 
that's that's a perfect testimonial for our service. Why? Yeah. Because we built the service for guys like Manny. We built it for people that don't understand investing, that don't know how to trade, that don't want to learn how to trade. This is why mm -hmm. we built what we did. So it we can level the playing field. We can level the playing field. So the Talas and the Ryans and yes. the Mannies and the Rollins have their only chance at this lifetime that we know of. We've built the only thing in the world that I know of that levels the playing field between the good old yep. boys mm -hmm. and the rest of the world. And so mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna take our clients from where they are to knocking on the door for the good old boys in the millionaire club. And it's going to happen. And we're going to create a thousand, 1000 millionaires in the next five years. And we want, if you're listening, you're not part of the service, get the service, mm -hmm. get the service. It's at um, stockpickprofits.com. I'd love to welcome yeah. you and yeah. let's enjoy the ride together because it's a big, big ride we're taking. So I'll get off my, my soapbox. And it's more fun when we all win together, right? You know, it Isn't is it great. I, yeah, you know, remember when when we first started the company, who were our clients? Almost all my friends. Yeah, we yeah. We're making money for all yeah. my friends. Why? Because it was it's all awesome. friends and family, yeah. <laughs> anyway. But That's yeah, all I've got. You know, you know, it, it, thank you so much, Samuel. I mean, those are words of wisdom. And they're, uh, it, look, if you guys watch this show later, listen to every word Samuel's saying. It's an important story. It really is. Well, you know, there were painful lessons and, and you know, this is the painful point. lesson. You, you look for mentors that have been where, you yeah. know, have been through the hardship to get to where you want to go. Like if, you, bet. you know, you that's bet. the whole point. I, all my life I've had mentors that, you know, I'm here and now I need to find a mentor that's up here. So I latch on and absorb yeah. that knowledge. And so I keep growing in my life. And that's the whole point is how do we get you to where you are? I mean, a lot of our clients come to us with what I call um, poverty yeah. consciousness. And mm -hmm. poverty consciousness mm -hmm. is like a mental illness. It's like, I don't deserve wealth. I don't deserve a million bucks. I, you know, yeah. maybe you're not consciously saying that, but your mm -hmm. subconscious is firing this crazy pattern. Like, oh man, I'm not good enough. I'll, I'll just lose the money. I, I'm not smart enough to have a million bucks. Stop. Just stop. Because for once in your life, we've created a service. Thank you, Tala. We've created a service yeah. that absolutely levels the playing field between you, the average investor and the good old boys that are making the hundreds of millions of dollars behind closed doors that you never hear about you bet you bet you bet okay now i'm done okay samuel yeah. okay samuel i'm gonna let you go then okay go start your okay. weekend get out to the north shore all you viewers right now every single one of you you take the cue from samuel right now okay markets close we've done our deal do what samuel's doing go to the north shore if you like Netflix, you want to just stare at the Netflix for three, three, two days, do it, do it and enjoy it. But know that even though you're on the couch, uh, munching on munchies, drinking sodas that you're not supposed to drink, watching TV shows you probably shouldn't be watching, your money is working its ass off for you. You're not working your ass off. For your and money. it's an exciting time in the market. Exciting. And it's exciting. Look at look at what's happening in the in the economies, the global growth, the uh, even this trade. You can call it trade wars, but just watch how it's developing. These are some of the most powerful, influential people in the world determining our futures and stuff. You know, don't get caught in the echo chamber and go all left or all right. Ooh, thank Enjoy you for saying it. that. Enjoy yeah, let, it. Let's finish on that note because I think it's important that people realize yeah. <clears throat> don't and hear what Patrick just said. Guys, don't get caught up in I love Hillary and I hate Trump or I love Trump and I hate Hillary. Who yeah. gives a crap? Look, yeah. we are we're investors. If there's yeah. this going on, we'll 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 move it here and then we'll move it there. Yeah. We're, we're malleable. We don't our opinions of our personal opinions, preferences, likes, mm -hmm. dislikes, political leaning. Who gives a crap? We just That's are here to right. make millionaires. Let's That's make all you money. should be concerned about. Let's make so, money. I think our I think our subscribers are smarter than that, uh, than to get caught up in all the political, um, you know, you bet they rhetoric. Are. You bet they are. Actually, we've got a smart group of players. Yeah. Uh, while there are some important social issues, you guys, what's important to you? Like, do you want to create a legacy? For your family, your family's family, and generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Don't get, yeah. don't get caught up in all the noise. Like, mm -hmm. create the life that you want. And yeah. that's why we built the service so you can be free to create that life 
we handle all the rhetoric and bullshit from all these crazy networks that are trying to yeah, assimilate yeah, all yeah, this yeah, crazy yeah. We'll information it for you yeah but go enjoy your life you guys this is exactly you why we do what we do so mm -hmm. you know and that's that's incredibly good advice and remember something and i'm going to close the show i'm going to leave you on with me okay samuel for the close yeah. but um i wanted to and uh, thank you son i'm sure he will yeah, thanks, Sana. <laughs> but I want to share something, Samuel. I want to put this up with us. Ooh, it's uh, our, it's is, our main man. Yeah, it's our... Well, the theme of the week has been Warren Buffett, right? So uh, we had Charlie Munger, his assistant, yesterday. But let's look at this. I got to do what I like to do every single day of the year. This plays exactly into what Samuel's saying. You know what I mean? Look at this is the most, the biggest, and this guy has billions of dollars in single trades, and he did what he wanted to do every day of the year. Why? Because his money worked for him. <laughs> so there's a famous, there's a famous book out 20 years ago or so by a guy named Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki mm, yes. wrote a, wrote a national bestseller, global bestseller called Rich Dad Poor Dad, and in that he had the four quadrants of of career. There's e, there's employer, employer, employee, excuse me, employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Self employed. Okay. Business owner, and investor, and he kind of made a differentiation of where you you, you had to choose where you are, where you want to be, and most people are you know, employees, but they yearn to be down here as a, right. a business owner and investor because down here, the business owner and investor, that's where your freedom lies for your financial life. It's not as employee yeah. and it's not as self-employed. I mean, I used to think I've been self-employed since she's Louise yeah. since before I graduated college, my right, first right. job really. And so, but the problem was I was self-employed. I wasn't a business owner you were in a huge business yeah yeah difference huge difference i was great, working great in my business and not on my business and because of that i just had i just created a job where i just happened to be the boss and it sucked yeah so your yeah. your goal you, everyone's goal that's listening to the broadcast figure a way do what you got to do to become a business owner or an investor now we got the investor part handled for you like this it's turnkey done so you're already there now you've got these three quadrants you can just get rid of and go enjoy your life. Absolutely. The lessons, Absolutely. We, the lessons we learn as we get older, huh, Patrick? You bet. You bet. You know, and hopefully we can share it with the younger people and they don't have to learn it the hard way. So that's that's right? the that's the um, <laughs> that's the difficult part, right? The people that's that, the difficult part, yeah. The people that don't know us, the the cold market out there that have no idea yeah. who we are and what our mission is and all that. To, to get them to understand that life could be better when you just yes. open your mind and and follow yes. your instincts. We'll find follow out. Follow your instincts. That's right. Go with your heart. When when they tell you to do what you love, they're not talking about a specific industry or something. They're talking about do what you love. Follow your heart. You know, but you have to be sensible about it. Not everybody can be a rock star. Not everybody can be president of the United States. But you can be successful and you can be happy. And you can live a fantastic life, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll that's just what I'll, talking about. And I'll just end with this, if you don't mind. That is it, guys. We have a huge, huge goal to create one thousand millionaires mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with our service with trading options in the stock market. You don't have to learn how to do it. You don't have to mm -hmm. hover over your computer. You don't have to watch graphs all day every day and turn on MSNBC. You don't mm -hmm. have to pull your hair out. You don't have to get gray hairs. You don't have to bite your nails. All you got to do. Mm -hmm. We send you a text message maybe six or 10 times a month. Yeah. We're not day traders. Yeah. We're, we don't day trade. We swing trade. Yeah, so we six, to, six to 10 uh, trades a month and we're done. Why? Because you don't need to. You don't you need don't to do need it anymore. You don't need to, right. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Not. We're, we're spoiled. Yeah. We, we really are spoiled with because we have the most leverage tool in the stock market with we do. the most casual style of trading that tool. And you know, we laugh at other investors that are hunched over a computer doing day trading. I mean, God bless them. I don't know how they yeah. do it. But if Ooh. that's your thing, you know. If that's your thing, yeah, exactly. That's anyway. your thing. But I don't think it's anybody's real I don't really believe that it's anybody's thing. I never well, it's a it. it's a means to an end no. for those people that do that. It's, it's my a means opinion. to an end. It's a job. It's a job. Well, so right. Oh, God. So Who wants that? Being, 
they're back to being self-employed. You that just point, fell right? back down the ladder. <laughs> well, so you know, that's a good point, Patrick. Those people that are day trading, they're creating mm -hmm. a job for themselves. They're creating a self-employed job where they're their own boss, which sucks. Creates yeah. no freedom, no leverage whatsoever. So they got to move down the quadrant figure out how to become mm -hmm. a business owner or even better Fantastic. an investor mm -hmm. through stock pick profits. You, it's, it's built in. You get our service. You are now an investor. Congratulations. Game over. Yeah. You win. Yeah. You we win. don't want jobs. What does Robert Kiyosaki say about jobs? Just <laughs> over, just over broke. Yeah. Just over broke. Okay. Because think about it. And Samuel, I mean, we're running long, so I'm going to keep this real quick, but think about what Samuel said. Look, okay. So, if you if you have five hundred thousand dollars and you go day trade and you sit there for eight hours picking at it picking at it picking at it, ninety six percent of traders lose money. So the odds are already against you. you. You're putting in eight hours a day. That's a forty hour week. That's a full time job. Maybe you're making a hundred dollars here, a couple hundred dollars there, but you have to pay taxes on it. It's different. It's not taxed income and things like that. Why not just go get a job, right? If you're gonna do that. I mean, the whole idea is you'll like have you more said, freedom. Samuel. Yeah, you'll actually have more freedom, right? And guess what? When things go wrong, you blame the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's blaming you. Samuel and knows. You He's the CEO of companies, man. And you, you get know? to go home at the end of the day, right? And you get to go <laughs> home at the end of the day, yeah. And if there's a fire at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're not the one that has to take the phone call, you know? <laughs> but anyways so look i think this was a fantastic show it was a great show for friday i think there's a lot of lessons in this that people uh, there's a lot of value for people if you're if you're just tuning in be sure to watch the whole thing um it's it's a incredible story samuel's story it's no different than most of the, almost every story in our concierge and and everybody we've dealt with over time and it could be your story make it your story you know or write your own story. Uh, it just don't, don't, don't go get a job. Yuck. Ooh. <laughs> you. <Yeah>. And <laughs> automation is going to bounce you out of that job in the next couple of years anyway. So. Oh, God, yes. Uh, especially our cashier at a restaurant, right? I mean, they, the you know, that's a good, there. but that's, a, you know, uh, here we go again, getting right back on another topic. But the truth mm. is, it's true. Yeah. yeah. I had this conversation with, with my Uber driver when I came back from the airport. And that is that, man, what are you going to go to college for these days? What 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 are you possibly right. going to get from college that that really is going to be there by the time you graduate and have a career out of it? Mm -hmm. Guys, the world is changing so fast and if you, Incredible. if you don't bust your ass to get to that investor quadrant immediately, I, I'm I'm worried for you. I'm really worried yeah. for you. Yeah. So I'm trying to find this article real quick to post a link. Um, there was some some big, some rich, rich, filthy rich guy that says an MBA is just not even worth the money anymore. And he made a lot of sense. Um, I'll find the article and I'll put it in the comments uh, later on. But you put it on the, on the right. show. Uh, yeah, or, show we'll, or, or, we'll, or we'll share it Monday and kind of recap it and stuff. Um, it's kind of slipped down the news cycle here, so. Uh, I can't find it. But anyways, it was it was one of your more successful entrepreneurs, business tech guy. And he was just saying it, it, the exact same thing Samuel said. What do you get an MBA for? Right. I mean, really, what do you if there's going to be automation that does everything you do? They already have uh, uh, algorithms that can trade stocks. They already have all these things. Analysts are worried that they're being they're being replaced with automation. You think it only affects the ten dollar an hour worker? Uh, no, it's affecting the two hundred thousand dollar a year jobs, too. So, you know what I mean? If you're not setting your own future, like Samuel said, if you're not building your own wealth, Man, it's it's a tough road out there. It's gonna it's be. Tough, I, I'm tough scared road. for a lot. I'm you know I'm scared you for bet. a lot of Americans that you bet. Are, are getting towards that time. Anyway, Sana so. enjoyed that. Sana well, likes from, Sana's from Sweden, so she's laughing at all of the Americans. And just so all you guys know, this is how it is. Whenever whenever we're up at the office or we're having summits or whatever, Samuel and I can go on and on and on and on about all kinds of subjects, you know. <laughs> But you know why we can do that? Because we don't have to go to work, right? Because we're investors. We're on the top of the ladder. And that's where we want you. Yeah. Well said. Well said. So, Samuel, we're just holding you up from the sun in front of the, of Makaha and all the viewers, too. It's time for you guys to go start the weekend in it also. 
especially all you members of SPP. You guys stop right now and go enjoy, okay? <laughs> we'll see you Monday morning, all right? So, Samuel, as always, yeah. thank you so much for blessing you us with your, yeah, yeah. with your, you, you know, all you, all you members and stuff. At some point, maybe we'll have you on the show and stuff. If you, if uh, we'll talk about it with Samuel in the office, you know, oh, it's a good idea. So yeah, it's a, good it's idea. a lot of fun. You can see it's a lot of fun and it's interesting, and we all learn from each other. So, actually, that's a good idea. Some of our, some of your regular yeah. viewers on the show, it'd be a great idea to pull them you out bet. and find out, find out where they were mentally and emotionally before they yeah. joined the service. Yeah. That, that's important for people to realize that would be that would be really handy so if you do want to be a guest on the show if you yeah. do want to be a guest on the show please comment down below say yes i'd like to be a guest mm -hmm. and we can schedule that in for upcoming episodes yeah. great idea samuel great idea and look look here you go sana is see sana is a subscriber she was a subscriber before she even had a portfolio right before she even knew what an option was she was a subscriber god bless her Look what she's going to go. She's not going to be here Monday and Tuesday because she's going to Australia. Yeah. Which, mean, which means it's actually Sunday and Monday, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and don't worry, Sana. The replays are always up there for you, and we'll see you on Wednesday. You know, but that's great. We love to hear that. We love to hear that, you know. So, again, thank you all. Uh, follow Samuel, what Samuel said. If you want to be on the show, if you want to come tell your story, you know, and maybe uh, share some of your insight with us, um, go ahead and put in the comments and, and the office. Laura and them will take care of that for you guys, okay? So, otherwise, you know, just quickly to review the week. It was a good week. We closed off with this nice, strong bang. Ignore that second half of the market. It's your usual Friday action. There's a lot of news cycle in there that people are a little leery. Plus, you had what we talked about. We had window dressing for the funds and stuff. Uh, the second quarter is a big one for them because it's the mid-year part. So, you know, just kind of take that with a grain of salt. Um, you should be positioned well as a service. We feel like we're positioned really well. What are you doing with your money, okay? Remember what Warren Buffett says. He was the feature all week. You know, be patient, enjoy life. Be patient, enjoy life, okay? So we're going to close that. Again, Samuel, thank you very much. All you viewers, you thank bet. you so much for your comments. Um, we'll catch you guys on Monday. You have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks, Patrick. Aloha. Thank you, Aloha. Samuel. Aloha.